Hi there! You are now watching Video Gaming Father's video review of a puzzle platformer with cute animals in the main role called Koala Kids. Can one find any touching story in the game explaining why the cute Australian bear plays the main role here? Will it test your reflexes, brain cells or both of them? Does the level design make each level unique and interesting or will you soon have a feeling of deja vu? Will you be facing variable and original enemies? Are there any innovative ideas or skill upgrades enhancing the gameplay? Won't you get frustrated by the clunky controls or overwhelming difficulty of the game? Can the game graphics, music and sounds please your senses or will they rather suffer in pain? Is the game suitable for family playing supported by the local multiplayer? Let's spend the next few minutes together and find it out in my Koala Kids video review. Let's start with the story. Evil treasure hunters landed on the island that is supposed to be full of treasures. However, the island is also inhabited by peaceful koala bears who seem to be an obstacle in their ransom. So they simply decided to capture all the koalas while they were sleeping. Luckily for koalas, and also for us as there would be no game otherwise, they have not managed to capture all of them. It's not a big surprise that you take the role of that uncaptured koala and start fighting for freedom of your beloved ones by taking a weapon and killing all bad guys that dare to... No, wait a second. This is not any violent game. Your mission is clear. To liberate your koala family, but to do this you will need to use your intellect rather than brute force. The story is a slight disappointment as there is a just short animation in the beginning and that's it. It's not developed further either by animations or text. But it's not so important for the game concept, so let's better take a look at the gameplay now. Koala Kids is a classic puzzle platformer with all its pros and cons. In the first few levels you will learn how to jump, avoid the traps, activate switches releasing your way further, and also to collect the items. The whole concept of the game slightly reminded me of Toki Tori that I reviewed some time ago. You have the inventory where you have the items that you need to use in the right places to successfully accomplish each level. You have two slots for items in your inventory. Unlike in Toki Tori, you do not start the level with all items in your inventory, but you need to collect them first from the various places in each level. The other difference is that you do not have a limited number of them, so once you have the item in your inventory, you can use it as many times as you wish. So, in almost each level you need to jump between the platforms, activate some switches, opening the doors, collect the useful items that you will be using to get further, avoid the traps and enemies, collect the coins, diamonds and other treasures to get to the exit door. The game is split into worlds, in Super Mario Star for example, and each world consists of up to 5 short levels that fits to one screen. Now let's take a close look at what kind of items you will be using and what kind of obstacles you will need to get through. Do you like farm animals like pigs and donkeys? If yes, then good for you. If not, well, you will need to put your aversion aside for a while. Why? Because pigs and donkeys will be the first few items that you will need to collect to get further. Pig serves as a trampoline and your hero gets higher when jumping onto it and donkey's kicks moves you further horizontally. Quite original ideas, aren't they? As you progress through the game you will be collecting dynamites that can destroy stone blocks staying in your way water buckets that can extinguish lava fields that would be otherwise lethal for your hero, and snares that can eliminate the evil hunters that shoot on you at the first sight. In later levels there are usually more items to use than free slots in your inventory, so you need to think a bit forward which items you will need to use yet, and which ones you will have no use for anymore. 
which is not a big deal as the whole level fits to one screen as I mentioned before. As for the traps, you will mostly find classics here that I am sure that everyone has seen many times before. Spikes, arrows or lava flames. Others could simply use more imagination here as they did with some items. Let's see if they did better with the variability of enemies and the game environment. The answer here is, quite simple, not really. You will be facing porcupines that can be passed when they are idling and hiding their thorns, rolling armadillos that are harmless for some time when they hit the wall or arrive at the edge of the platform, and the main enemies, evil hunters that are harmless only when you are behind them and thus they do not see you. Luckily the level design allows you to pass them or get rid of them by several possible ways. You can hide in the omnipresent bushes and let them pass you by unattended. You can imprison them between the trapdoors or even eliminate them if you close the trapdoors at the right moment while they are standing on them. Or sometimes you can also open the direct way to the lava field for them. Strangely enough, dynamite doesn't work on them and snares are effective only against the hunters. Most likely not to make the game too easy. So the level design is not bad and quite often you have more ways to resolve the situation. The environment on the other hand is still the same. Brown ground, platform covered by green grass, flowers and bushes, some traps, levers, blocks, doors and enemies. You will not find anything here that would make the game environment more interesting. Different colors, rainy weather or something like this. It could be definitely designed with using more imagination to receive the feeling of stereotype. And there are also not any skill upgrades or some other RPG elements that would help with this problem and enhance the gameplay at least a bit. How about the game difficulty and controls? As for the difficulty, Koala Kids belongs among easier games, so it can be played by the kids and casual players without frustration. The levels are short, there are checkpoints in the bigger ones, and there are clear patterns in the behavior of your enemies. There is also no time limit that would make one nervous. On the other hand, there could be at least some measure of time or steps needed to finish the level with an online leaderboard like in Stell Buster Dogs, for example. This would be the way to increase the player's motivation and also precede the early steroid. Luckily enough, there is a local multiplayer which makes the game even more suitable for family playing. Game controls are rather controversial. I would like to play the game on the Xbox controller as I usually do with the platformers, but you need to configure it in the external files and not in the game directly, which is a pretty archaic way. Controls preciseness on the keyboard is above average. Controls are responsive most of the time, but sometimes it reacts in a weird way, which usually costs you a life. Not a big deal, but the impossibility to set up the controller directly in the game is a minus one. When it comes to the game audiovisuals, the game graphics are simple but cute and detailed enough for such a game. The truth is that the colors are almost the same in every level, but it is rather caused by the low variability of the environment than the graphics itself. There are only a few sounds, but the existing ones when jumping on the pig or being kicked by the donkey are at least fun. The game music suits the game, but the problem is that there are only few music tracks, so the music becomes repetitive quite soon. And here we are, slowly but surely coming to the conclusion. Is this game worth playing by fellow gaming fathers and their families, or should it better look somewhere else? On the plus side there are good level and puzzle design, more possible solutions of many levels, instant gameplay, reasonable difficulty, 
presence of local multiplayer, cute graphics and suitability for family play. On the minus side are the absence of story, low variability of enemies and environment, absence of any skills development or some other RPG elements, impossibility to set up the controller inside the game, generic music and creeping stereotype due to low variability and simplicity of the game concept. Corolla Kids costs just 1.6 euro on Steam, which is a very reasonable price for the offerings. Thanks to the short levels, reasonable difficulty and local multiplayer, the game is very suitable for playing by the whole family, which is an indisputable plus. If you are looking for a complex puzzle platformer with big levels, challenging difficulty and skills development, then Corolla Kids is definitely not for you. But if you are looking for family fun during short sessions, it is for sure something that this game can deliver. This is actually a deciding factor why I'm giving this nice little game thumbs up and Video Gaming Faros Index 7 minus out of 10. Recommended. Thank you for watching my Koya like Kids video review and if you have enjoyed it, please do not forget about thumb up and subscribing to my Video Gaming Faros channel. Hope to see you soon!